In this video, we're going to uh, do another example of uh, a volume, and uh, and then we're also going to talk about uh, two different types of questions that you might encounter, and uh, kind of the way to decide uh, your integration order. Um, so this problem: find the volume of each shape bounded from above by that function. Uh, now I just want to talk that that uh, because coming up, we're going to start talking about uh, triple integrals. Uh, we're going to use a double integral for this particular problem. And the reason really is that we've been given a three-dimensional uh, you know, graph, that, like a z equals graph. Uh, but then we've been given, like, this is the base. The ba you know, it's kind of down to this shape. And let me show you what that kind of base would be. All right, so here we've got the, uh, the base of our, uh, of our function. And um, really... Uh, what this kind of means is that we have this three-dimensional thing in the z-axis, but we're only talking about kind of almost like a, a prism. Like if this were the base, it's all like imagine this coming out of the screen at you. It's all of the volume where this is the base up to this function. So this is like the top of the function. And the reason we could use a double integral for this is because the, uh, the base is just flat on the xy plane. If we had two curves that were kind of like we were sandwiching a volume between two different z equals type equations, uh, then it would be better to use uh, triple integrals. Okay. Now, one way in which you can decide uh, your order of integration uh, that we're going to talk about a little more later is simply by, you know, the equations we've been given are both y equals. So when you set up your, your double integrals, like this, like this, um, the, the variable, in this case x, that should be the last integral you do, okay? The variable in your equations. We've got y equals x plus 2, y equals x squared. So dx, like, that should go with this last integral. So it should go dy, dx, like that, where, you know, we kind of work our way out. Um, so that's that's kind of one way to do it. So you'll notice, of course, our uh, our top function is uh, the line, the bottom function. So we're going to integrate this from uh, x squared to x plus 2. And then you'll see over here we've got uh, negative 1 and 2. Of course, you could set these two curves uh, equal to each other and solve. You know, you could say, okay, x squared equals x plus 2, and solve that, but you're going to get negative 1 and 2. So those are our bounds. Uh, we've got uh, 2x squared plus 3xy squared. You'll remember that, you know, okay, it's dy, so therefore we treat uh, x as though it were a constant. So our first integral, of course, will just be uh, 2x squared y uh, plus... We're going to, 3x is a constant. We raise the power on y squared and divide. So it actually will be x, y cubed. We're going to evaluate this at x plus 2 and x squared. Okay, so this is just that first, first integral. So let's see, if I plug in x plus 2, um, I've got 2x squared times x plus 2 plus x times uh, x plus 2 cubed, um, minus, and then I plug in uh, x squared, so 2x squared times x squared, and uh, plus x times x squared um, cubed. All right, I've, uh, <laughs> I've just quickly uh, actually expanded that out. Uh, let me simplify that now. All right, I've combined my like terms. So now what's left to do is to integrate this from negative 1 to 2, okay? So I'm, I'm going to run out of room here, but let me do, maybe let me just do a, a little bit further, and then I might stop. All right, so we've got, raise the power divide, we've got 2x to the fourth. Uh, plus 16 thirds x cubed minus 1 fifth x to the fifth minus 4x squared 
minus 1 eighth x to the eighth. And then we would plug in neg uh, 2 and negative 1 to that answer, okay? And that would give us the volume. Um, I'm going to just write, like, we would evaluate this. Uh, I don't have room to do that at, uh, at 2 and negative 1. All right, so I, I just want to talk about uh, uh, type 1 and type 2 regions with these types of double integral problems. And type 1 and type 2 really have to do with just which, uh, which direction you want, to, uh, you want to talk about, okay? Um, this would be considered right here. I, I know I put them in kind of a weird order. This would be considered a type 1. And a type 1 is where your, your perpendicular, your dx, this would come second, okay? So when you'd set up your, your, your double integrals, you'd have a dy and dx. So in this case, of course, your bounds would be 0 to 2. But in this problem, you could actually do it the other way. You could actually do it as a type 2 region where your dy was your kind of perpendicular to the axis, and you could in it, you know do your double integrals, and you'd have dx come first, and then you'd end with dy, in which case you want you know, if, if dy comes second, the y's have to be the numbers that you plug in, so your bounds would be 0 to 4. Now, obviously, in a problem like this, you have to be able, I mean, it's got to be the same answer, right? You've got to be able to do this and get the same answer. Um, but there are some types of shapes where it does make a difference uh, in terms of your ease of integration. The, the answers will always be the same, but let's look. So something like this a type 1 or type 2. So here, I hope what you see is that this would be easiest to do as a type 1, where you would be doing dx, okay? So you'd set up your integrals, you'd say, okay, so it's going to, dx has to go last, in which case from negative 1 to positive 1, those should be the numbers that I use. And the reason is, that if you were to try and do it as perpendicular to the y, that here, okay, you're going red to blue, but then at that same exact uh, y value, you also have fun the function over here. So you'd have to actually split this into multiple regions. You know, you'd have to say, okay, I got I to gotta do one integral from uh, 1 to 2. I've got to do another integral uh, from... Uh, you know, 0 to 1, because now it's just the red to the axis and the axis to the red. And then I'd have to come over here and maybe I could probably use symmetry and double my answer. But I would just, you'd have to split it into multiple pieces. And you can see over here, this example, uh, this lends itself great to being a type 2. Because doing this, drawing that perpendicular towards the y, I mean, this is always going to be, okay, if you kind of can't even tilt your head maybe, the uh, the orange is always going to be the function that's on top, and the red is always going to be on the bottom. Whereas if you did it dx, you'd say, okay, I've got, I've got this, I've got this, it's just going to each other. And then all of a sudden here, well, now it's a different kind of bottom function, right? I'd have to split that into multiple regions. It would be easier to do it with dy. And again, what all that tells me is that the y numbers then, in this case negative 1 and 2, um, that I should be doing dy. That should come, it should go dx and then end with dy. Okay, so a type 1 and type 2 shape.